Okay, here we're back for another video in the repair of this Sable Station wagon and the rocker panel on the left side of the car. Now I'm going to take the grinder and grind up here into the dog leg area. I know there's still more rust more than what the panel itself is going to cover. And we'll see where we're going to end up at here. <laughs> Else, I was surprised I ran into. If you notice where I'm grinding, somebody had already spread body filler, had did some temporary repairs to get the car, I assume, inspected. And they were going to clean some more hair, but that's sort of, I knew the car was rusty, but it was, turns out there's more hair than initially met the eye at first that was hidden. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I do later in the video, I have the car on my four post lift up in the air and uh, make it easier to work on. But on the other hand, it is easier to grind around that edge with the tire out of your way. I do eventually later on pull it off, but I'm stubborn right now. I'm working around the tire, just a little tip. And you can see rust heading up in underneath where the dog leg is. So we're going to have to get rid of some more to access it to fix it. And we're going to first here take this latch support plate off for the door, which is two of the Torx head screws. And they're coming out nice and easy, at least the first one is. These can sometimes, like on seat belts, be a problem, but that was no problem. And here's the one on the top, and yeah. And no problem. Wasn't that bad. Good deal. Didn't want to snap them off. Although at the stage on this, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. To probably a small problem on top of a big problem. And we're going to take the speed square and draw a line out around the corner here. Roughly where we're going to be cutting out. Because I eyed up when I looked up in how far up in the rust does go. Yeah, I know I've mentioned this in the earlier videos, if you've watched them. If not, you have to go check them out. But Speed Square is sort of a handy tool on this auto body work. And this I'm just drawing by freehand. And again, we're going to be replacing a bunch of this, but just save it for a pattern. To know we're going to have to do the bend and form another piece of metal in here using the angle grinder. And we're going to just cut this out. <laughs> However, around this tight edge, the angle grinder is not going to work, so I'm going to use my 90 degree air cutoff tool. It, I've mentioned this in other of these videos, but it's not as fast, but it can cut places where the angle grinder can only imagine going. The ultimate, I suppose, cutting tool is a plasma cutter, but that's one of those. I do not own one of those, and this does the job, and it's cost a fraction of the money. <laughs> Also, while you're cutting up there, you don't want to cut through the second layer of metal. Which spot welds to the interior, you just went through the first layer. Use a little caution and just go through the first. And here we're going to cut out across the dog leg. Now here we have the room to use the 4-inch angle grinder again. And if you do, as I mentioned, remove the tear, which I should, but I don't yet. I'm going to just cut this about 3 quarter, maybe to an inch wide, into the in towards the inner fender with the... 90 degree cutoff tool. Alrighty, we're done cutting for a moment. Now it's time to get the drill and get rid of some spot weld. Starting with our eighth inch drill bit to drill a pilot hole before using the spot weld cutter. Yeah. 
Yes, I mentioned it back in the first video, but I like the convenience of a quarter drill, but I'm not a keyless chuck person. I don't know why they don't put key chuck costs on these quarter drills, because yes, you can lose the chuck, but it's sure convenient while you have it. You can actually tighten the drill bit up tight. It don't catch and slip like the keyless chuck. No matter how tight you try to make those, they still seem to end up slipping, but yeah, well, we're getting her done. <laughs> Yes, if you go to tackle a rust repair project such as this car, you'll get really a lot of practice to drilling the uh, first pilot hole. And now, as I'm doing, drilling out around the spot weld with a spot weld cutter. You have a lot of practice. If you've never done it before, by your first time of doing this, you'll get the lots of practice in it. And also, while you're using the spot well cutter, your objective is to just cut through the first layer of metal, not the second. So after you get it worked away, you'll be able to weld the metal back to it. You'll have the backing part. I mean, if once in a while you accidentally go through too far and you drill a complete hole, I've done it. You'll just have to weld the hole shut, and then then you'll be able to weld the metal to where you welded the hole shut. It makes for more work, but again, one occasionally it's not the end of the road, but you wouldn't want to do it on a lot of them. And here we're trying to separate this away with a chisel and a hammer. I want to try to salvage this as good as just as possible because I will still be using part of it, but I need to remove more than what is actually rusty to get to what's rusted behind it that's rusted up farther. And now we're going to take and just go over them a little bit more with the spot well cutter back down to being cautious not wanting to drill through both layers i didn't quite go far enough and here let's give it a try again And we're starting to make a little progress to pulling it apart, but it's still wanting to... It didn't exactly drill in far enough on some and exactly where you need it. As far as drilling spot wells, it's not a perfect sign. Sometimes you'll do it the first try, and when you go to prime away, they'll come all at once, and then the next time they won't. But now I can see where the metal's catching, I, and I have enough of a groove, I'm just cut up through with the angle grinder a little bit to free some and now we're going to work back in behind carefully and pry with the chisel and see if we can get it and ah, they're starting to move pretty good but it's still holding up here at the top by one little piece of metal which we're going to get here it's coming don't want to again try to destroy it too bad it still will work again Coming up in future videos, you'll see how this will be coming back into play at some point. Okay, we finally got it free at the edge of the door opening. But now the only small catch is it's still back here around the edge. It's spot welded to the inner fender. And now we finally have taken the tire out of our way. And we can get in with the drill. I had no choice on this and we're going to drill our pilot hole. If you notice, I'm using a little Warrior Cordless Drill, which is the Economy Cordless Drill from Harbor Freight. It survived this whole project, which was done in June of 2021. But the drill, at uh, about a week before Christmas, I was working on a car, and I had to drill a strut bolt out that broke on a Taurus. It was actually my uh, my cousin's car, uh, and a Taurus, not a station wagon, but a car, but yeah, the bottom strut bolt broke, and they're threaded into the rear uh, knuckle with the rear, and I burned it up till I was done drilling the bolt, so, but it had been a pretty good drill. I had received about two years of use out of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm trying to show you on where all of these are I'm drilling so you can find them on your car. They all should be pretty much at the same place because I to get into a car this new. It was put together a lot by robots and stationary setup machines. So there's no really, they're not going to vary too much probably between them. And they're really about to have this off. And they're going to do a little bit more with the spot weld cutter. Yeah, right, it is free. And yes, anyone watching, I should have been wearing a pair of leather gloves. I have been doing pretty good on that throughout this project. And yes, I have had incidents over the years, but I didn't realize to making the video. I guess I was so excited and finally it was loose that I forgot. But there you can see what was back behind. Eh, no big surprise, more rust, but no pot of gold or anything hidden back behind. But this is where we're going to take now. Grab a speed square, and we're going to take the width of the speed square on that edge and draw a line out across where we had on the outer layer. And we're going to take and remove some more metal. And once we patch in between where the marker didn't draw, I go through a lot of markers, but I found it's still one of the best things to mark on this auto body work. And here we are going with our angle grinder and cutting again. And no difference as the outer layer. We're going to have to come around the corner here and cut back into the inner fender. Although with the tire off, that's easier. And here we have to drill. There's actually the layer we removed. This layer in between this construction on the car. And back behind is another layer of metal, which will be staying on the car, but I have to drill this. But, well, it's actually, I would have realized that you wouldn't have to be so cautious of worrying about going through the next layer. But here we go again, and just getting them a little deeper that we can get this next layer off. before is just to repeat here we're going to take a chisel i want to try a little bit finer chisel here and what i did earlier and see if we can start breaking it away and it's starting to move some along with the real flaky rust falling off and i do believe yes this is wonderful there's a hidden spot weld there again if you're watching this video you'll know all where this well, it is. Tap this back in, and they're pointing to where the other spot welds at. And there's also a spot weld up here in the door opening where the water stripping sits that was hidden. <laughs> Yeah, it's one thing if you pry carefully when you're doing this and there is a spot weld that you did not pick up the first time around, it'll show up and then you just go back through and take and drill it and take care of it. That's where you don't want to go too radical and go bending the neck. Because again, I'm going to have to use this metal to make patterns for new pieces of stuff since you can't just buy the replacement panels other than the outside rocker panel which i have and 
Okay, we're pretty much freed up, and we're going to get up in the inner fender, and excuse the smudge on the lens, and I'm just going to cut straight down, and this should be a pretty good place we can start, and eventually, building from here. <laughs> Okay, now, I think we're back into some half-decent metal here at the inner fender, but to get rid of this undercoating, I'm just going to take an air chisel back behind it, and it's cracking right off, no problem at all. This is sort of, you can do this, I've ground it over the years, but it makes a dusty mess, but at least this way you're not making all the dust, and yes, you can actually see hidden under the undercoating once you get up in a little ways, it's looking better. <laughs> say that's close enough because that last little bit that I didn't want to get that'll definitely be cut out it's rusty underneath the father and we're going to take and draw out across here as a mark I'm just doing a freehand that's nice carefully taken enough off that you're back up away from the rust and then we can eventually here weld in a panel back behind here for the interior to close off the inside of the rocker panel. Okay, now we're going to switch around and work from inside the inner fender area and get the rest of this cut. Couldn't quite get through the angle grinder was just a little bit too big and awkward but I think we'll get it or if all else fails I'll get out the little 90 degree tool but I think we'll just to pull this off if you notice here I'm cutting out across the inner fender and we're up above where the extreme rust is. I just resigned it up and cut it nice and straight. And now I'm going to use the little 90 degree cutoff tool and finish this. That will get it freed up and we'll get this out of the way. And we can start actually adding some more metal back into the car. Sort of on this, you take out, you add some, you take more out. Just back and forth as you go along. <laughs> yes, by removing some at a time and welding in as you go along once you have enough removed to get in a respectable piece it gives you a place to work to and it's not so intimidating that you end up with a whole big pile of rust and not know where to even start putting it back together and also in theory now i don't think on this car but if you were dealing with something perhaps rustier like into the floor pans and such if you cut too much away it might just fall apart and that wouldn't be any good and there we're taking, again, uh, knew I wasn't going to get away without using the 90 degree air cutoff tool. Have to take and cut across here into the wheel well area. And watch, you can see part of the subframes back behind. You only want to go through the first layer. And now, actually finish it up with the angle grinder. And also watch the emergency brake cable is right here.
Well, I've decided here to get the air chisel out to try to get this started away. Because one, that subframe thicker metal and it's good and solid. It's not going to rip up too quick. And that will actually save a little time. And again, with the rest, I couldn't really see the spot wells plainly. But once you start prying away, it gives you a good idea. And now I have the air chisel stuck. And now we can start drilling our spot wells that I can find them. As you can tell from the drill, that's thicker back behind that subframe when you're drilling through. It takes a little bit more effort to get the pilot hole than what we had at the door opening up above. But anyhow, one more here to drill with the uh, eighth inch bit. And that's something to have extra ones on hand. I broke a good many doing this. Now, the spot weld cutters hold in pretty good, but the eighth inch bits, I went through a good many of them. Okay, now we are ready for the spot weld cutter. At least on the good news on the spot weld cutter, it don't slip like the drill bit. It has a hex shaft on it, which helps it grip in well. Okay, here we have this last one, and I think that's all of them. And we'll be able to soon maybe get this out of the way. Yes, my air chisel, along with the chisel itself, have had his better days. But it's never going to get the grinder. It wouldn't cut through a little bit of a strand of this metal. But it just seems like it freed it up pretty good. And we we'll keep here with the chisel again. Okay, it's all but holding only with the thread. And it's, well... There we go. It is off. And now we got one little piece here that wanted to stick on. Let's see if the air chisel will take it off. And yeah, almost. This is what we're here hitting. There we go. Okay, that is going. And there we can start soon adding some metal. But there's the progress where we're at at this stage of the game. Yes, without a doubt, we have enough removed now to start... To pick up where we left off in the early videos, and we're going to put this begin this complete inside piece of metal in, which is somewhat simple. It's just a straight piece of metal. Now, when we get farther along, more will be bent, but yeah, we're going to measure the width. I believe it looks like around three and five eighths, three and three quarter inches, and we're going to take a measure the length and the width here and cut this out. And using our marker here again on our sheet metal. And it looks like, in my case, it was 16 and 3 quarters. Again, yours may vary on how rusty or maybe not as rusty your car is. And we use the speed square to put our mark. And now we're going to take a measure the width of it. And it looks like about 3 and 5 eighths. Yes, I'm choosing to put a couple marks a couple places across, and then I'm just going to use the speed square and draw the line. You could actually just put one and go get a long, regular square, but 
regular square is hard with the thickness of the metal, hard to get a hold to be sure it's tight against. And this way, you can just, you see, do a little bit at a time, and you can just draw your straight line. And again, with the measurement every about four or five inches, all you're doing is basically connecting the marks you made, and there it is. And now we get to cut it out. There's that cut out. Now we're going to come back over to the car and take and put a mark here out across. There's an extra layer of metal here coming down that we need to dispose of. And just take and only want to cut through this first layer like where it bends down from the top and comes back in towards the where the rocker panel sat. And just trimming it out here nice and careful like. Now to finish cutting this, not because of the deal, there's plenty of room to access it, but due to the fact I don't want to cut through the extra layer of metal, I'm just going to finish this up on the front edge of this with the small 90 degree cutoff tool. And there we got that, and we're going to take care and grab the chisel, I mean, I'm actually just using a screwdriver, and it's coming loose, except, yeah, there's a spot weld, which we know what to do with that. this again here and take a pry and see what happens now. Look at all that dirt and rust and coming down from it. No wonder it was rusted and there it peeled back away and you see there's another layer of metal and I'm going to just take and break that off and there's the piece we cut loose from and look at all the mud and that up behind there but the rest of that we're going to salvage and make it happen. Now I'm going to take and clean this up before we weld our plate in that we cut out the rest of the short time ago with the grinder. Now that piece is hanging free and loose. When we get the replacement metal put into place, we will be welding it back fast. And actually right now I'm going to take here and put a little bit of a tack weld to start holding it before we put the replacement metal in. OK, 
Okay, there we have one little spot. I'm going to take here and add another one. We're just going to do the whole theme. I was going to wait till the replacement metal was in, but I think we welded fast before we put the replacement panel in because this seam will be easy to weld the seam between the existing seam that we're making now and where we're going to be welding that new metal to it. And you can see it's welding nice, not a problem on it. As mentioned many times in the videos doing this, when you're welding thinner metal, you take, weld a second, stop, weld again, and just back and forth. You just sort of give like a temporary one second, maybe a two second pause, and occasionally take the wire brush and clean the flux off to help aid in starting the next welding arc. And here we're doing some more and giving a little bit different view here looking down upon the welding taking place. And you also take notice how I bounce back and forth instead of usually I go about an inch and then I switch to a different spot. Although that works until towards the end like we are now. There's not much place more to go to another place and weld. But down the other hand when you're this close to done it usually will go the rest of the way and won't work on that that much because most of it over 90% is fastened and there we go. Okay, we're going to get this ground fairly smooth this weld, so when we put the replacement piece in, it will sit it against it with not a lot of uh, gap in between, and it will make welding nice to it. Yeah, for years I used the four and a half inch angle grinder and I switched to a four and a half inch don't sound like much but that extra, that less half inch is so much more convenient in tighter areas and more maneuverable. I'm really impressed at what a difference it made there. I was sort of even a little skeptical to go with the four inch instead of a four and a half when the four and a half inch one I had on before this grinder quit, but the price was right at Harbor Freight, and yeah, I do not regret the decision. Now that is ground about as good as we are going to get it. Now I'm going to bring the metal here temporarily and fit it in here just for a short time because we're going to take and put some holes in at the drill plug wells. I'm going to take the marker and where we left off at the former panel, you can see that plug weld at the end. I'm going to take here and draw right straight across and put a mark right there. And then we're going to take and put a mark here where this is going to be. We're going to be doing plug welds where this trailing arm bracket is. Mark where that is. And now we can go over to the workbench here shortly. 
except one more mark to make. I'm closing this hole up, but I don't want to drill a hole where the, this oval-shaped hole was stamped in the car, so temporarily going to put this back up against and mark where that is. So when I'm making the holes in it, won't make a hole in that area. And now we're going to take the speed square and push some marks out across the it basically seven eighth one inch down the width of the speed square where i'm going to be drilling some holes now if you watch some of the earlier videos you may be wondering why i do not just use the air punch flange tool to do this well simply put the air punch flange tool doesn't have a deep enough opening to put the holes down an inch into the metal it'll only go in like a half inch so I'm going to have to just use the drill and drill bits to make the spots where we're going to be plug welding. And there we have those all marked. Now we can take and start drilling. I'm going to drill an eighth inch hole first and then go to a three sixteenth bit. Although you could just the only do the three sixteenth if you wanted to. It is just sheet metal. This is probably overkill. And if you notice, I'm using a, just a scrap piece of 2 by 4 down under the metal to drill holes into. I don't want to drill holes into my saw horses particularly, although the tops of those saw horses have been used and abused, but I'll save them some extra holes drilled in them. Okay, and there we're out through with the eighth inch bit. One more here to go, and then we're going to go up the ante to the 3 sixteenth inch bit. And there we go. those are drilled and I'm just going to take a grinder here and smooth off the burrs from the drill bit so it sits nice and flush against the car when we take it back over and clamp it into place. But before we go back over and weld it to the car we have to take care of the where this is going to be spot welded to the tracking bar brace and I measured it and it comes up and it looks like about two and a half and I'm going to just take the speed square and mark up through to there and I'm going to take and put another straight mark up the the height of it and now we're going to do that and now we can simply just draw across there with the speed square across the two lines across the top and there's roughly the area of that and I'm going to take and mark it it's not, it don't have to be exact, just put four marks here and drill four holes which will be plug welded here shortly when we get it back over to the car and I am just going to drill these with the 3 16th bit and be done with it. Okay, and while it's clamped firmly here on the saw horse, going to take grinder here and just grind across this top edge where we will be welding. So it'll make a good contact with the welder and should start to arc easily to make a nice weld. And here we are back over to the car. And we've got to take and put a pair of vice grips here in the front corner first. 
and that's holding enough here. I'm going to grab another pair of vice grips, and I'm going to take here and put the little pair of vice grips right here on this trolling arm bracket once we get around. Okay, and then that slides right back up in underneath. Have to loosen them up a little bit, and well, maybe, possible, and there's our nose clamp then. Okay, now we're going to put another pair of vice grips here at this rear. Get it clamped as good as we can. Now, this is sort of awkward here because it sits up in, but I'm using the big wide mouth seat clamp. I'm going to clamp, get a hold of it, and clamp it fast and pull the metal in tight. Once we start welding some, then it'll start pulling in, and then I have actually another one of those big wide mouth seat clamps to use. And I'm going to say that we'll get it started, and let's go here. We're going to start with doing a little bit of welding here on the seam. And due to the fact that it can't get really clamped the best, while it's still good and warm and malleable the mud, I'm taking the punch and the hammer and just tapping it in nice and tight. And it's holding good because it actually, the seat clamp there wasn't as tight as when I put it on, which means it pulled the metal in. But I am still going to readjust it here and before we weld another round here. And since we first started welding the same, here next going to take and do one of the plug welds down below where we did the little bit on the seam. And that will hold that section in nice. If you noticed on this, I did slightly overlap it to the earlier piece of the, that backing for the rocker panel that was put in. It makes the welding easier. It, yeah, it is a little bit of a place moisture can get in between, but I just only like an eighth inch overlapped it. And here we're welding the vertical down the front seam. Okay, we got the front edge of that in fairly good. Now let's go back and you can see a pretty good gap at the car. I'm going to remove the seat clamp and position further back and pull this in once it get worked up in there. It's sort of tight with corners because right there is the bracket for that trailing arm. And that's as far back as I can basically come with it. But that's close enough. And once you get that far welded in, eventually it'll start pulling in and won't need any clamping at all. And then using the punch deal to pull it in. And now we're going to take and do some tech welding. Needless to say, the panel is a long ways from being welded in completely, but that's a good start, and we'll work with the punch, but it's basically to the point it's definitely not going to fall off at this point, and here we're going to take and reposition these vice grips at the rear, 
and we're going to take and do this plug weld way at the back. Okay, now we're going to move sort of right in the middle on this and take and weld some in the seam again. And this is also where the new piece we're putting in meets that old piece that comes down at the triangular shaped area. It's all bringing it all into one happy bit of metal again instead of rusted up pieces. Now we're going to go back and do our first plug weld here at the trolling arm bracket. Also, while I'm doing these plug welds on this trailing arm bracket, I upped the heat on the Hobart MiG-140 from the number one notch, which is about 95% of this what I welded on at the heat level. But on this, I bumped it up to two because, again, that is a 3 16th inch bracket back behind, so you get penetration into it. And I'm just going to take care of another one of these right now. And again, since you're welding it over to thicker metal, it's not a, such a problem on warping in that. Now one last time around with the punch and the hammer. And here we're going to take and once more. A little bit more hitting. And we're going to take and do the last one of these while we're down here. Indeed, after welding those four plug welds at that trailing arm bracket, pulled it in nice and solid towards the rear. Now I'm going to go work back up towards the front again on it. If you noticed after I tapped with the hammer where it was pulled in the farthest after hitting with the hammers where I put another little tack weld and here I'm going to take and just rotate back and forth as we go do another plug weld. And I have mentioned this and I think earlier in the video and other videos on these plug welds. Yes start right in the middle sort of keep your gun right in the 90 degree angle although I'm tilting a little bit trying to do the camera and just sort of take your molten puddle and work it around towards the outside of the hole. Yes, if at any point watching any of the videos you have a question, feel free to put it in the comments below. And I don't check every day, but within a couple of days to a week at the most, I will get back if you have a specific question. If I can help you out, I will. If not, I'll see if I can lead you in the right direction. And here we're doing some more. Got, like I say, it's coming along pretty good. We got a long section, about six inches of seam done in that one place and we've got a 
few more plug welds here to go and some more same but it's well on the way Yeah, I keep moving the camera, trying to give you different angles on looking at the welding, how I'm holding the welding gun, so you can get different viewpoints of everything that's happening while you're doing the project such as this. Oh, and one thing on this project, do not, if it's your only car to drive, expect to do it over the course of the weekend, because I would say if you'd work straight ahead, had all the tools and that, you could probably do one side in probably about a week if you work about seven eight hours a day well this look at it this way and i added a bunch of spots out this is the sixth video now in this series and each one's approximately an hour long some are a little bit less that one's actually a little bit over and that against cutting a lot out so that sort of gives you an idea how long it will actually take to do the project in itself And also in this series, there's, I'd say it's going to take about an hour as long as I want to make the videos due to the upload time to YouTube and to keep it somewhat organized. But I'd say it's going to take two more till I actually do have the rocker panel, what the main objective of it is in place, the replacement rocker panel that had been purchased. And I do, I did in the last video, and I will again apologize for the length of time between these videos. I had had this whole project finished up during the summer, and I posted the first videos, the part one through four, between like July and August. And then it went till uh, the weekend of Christmas till I posted the last one, and this was going to be out on New Year's Day. But I have been busy with other things projects and again sorry if anyone was really watching them on the delay between them However, one thing I will say, if you're waiting on actually on doing the paint work there, somebody had asked me about what the paint costs for the car. This again is my cousin's husband's car, and the car in general does need a whole paint job. It's dented, and it's not a very pretty car, but he didn't want to spend the money for it. I just, after it was all done, finished it off in primer. So if you're waiting for the a part on actual finished paint that's not going to be because he was his choosing not to spend the money until he has enough to do the whole car perhaps down the road but at the time on this because i asked him on it if he wanted me to get paint mixed and just paint the rocker panels touch it in and he's like nope just go with primer since the rest of it is so dead it's got little dings and dents every place in it
we are pretty close to having this section here welded in another plug weld here and a, just a little bit more seam to finish up but it's all but welded in and we'll be picking up on this bud here coming up shortly on the next video this plug weld is going to sum it up we're going to step back here once we finish this plug weld take one last overview and that is where we're at at the end of the sixth video again check back part seven will be coming here and hopefully you like this be sure to hit that like button and subscribe